Hi, welcome back. In this video, I am going to show the cholinergic receptors and their drug targets. Acetylcholine is the one of the mediator in the parasympathetic system and at a low dose, it produces one set of actions including bradycardia, bronchoconstriction, increased GI motility, and bladder constriction, salivation, lacrimation, and fall in the blood pressure. Similarly, the acetylcholine at high dose produce another set of actions including CNS excitation, ganglionic stimulation, adrenaline release, and raise in blood pressure. So if you observe the two set of actions, you can find the quite opposite actions in the terms of blood pressure. At low dose, acetylcholine produces fall in the blood pressure, but at the high dose, it produces the raise in the blood pressure. So why is this acetylcholine produces the quite opposite actions at low dose and at high dose? Again, it was observed that the low dose actions of the acetylcholine are reproduced by muscarin and the high dose actions of the acetylcholine are reproduced by the nicotine. Since those actions are reproduced by muscarin, these actions are called as muscarinic actions and the other set of actions which are reproduced by nicotine are called as nicotinic actions. So with this, we can conclude that acetylcholine is not acting on a single receptor, but it's acting on the two different receptors. One type of receptors are activated at the low dose of the acetylcholine and another, set, another type of receptors are activated at the high dose of the acetylcholine. And the first type of receptors are activated by muscarin and second type of receptors are activated by nicotine. So now acetylcholine acts on the two receptors. The first one is the muscarinic receptors and second one is the nicotinic receptors. And muscarinic receptors are stimulated by muscarin and nicotinic receptors are stimulated by nicotine. And atropine is one of a blocker selectively blocking the muscarinic receptors, but it is not having any action on the nicotinic receptors. And we can also find another difference between the muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. Muscarinic receptors are G protein coupled receptors, whereas nicotinic receptors are inotropic receptors. You know, G protein coupled receptors are slow acting and inotropic receptors are fast acting. So in this way, acetylcholine can produce the slow actions through the G protein coupled receptors and fast actions through the inotropic receptors. Now let us go in detail about the nicotinic receptors. Nicotinic receptors are of three types, NN, NG and NM. NN is called as neuronal, NG is called as ganglionic and NM is called as muscular. NN type are mainly present on the CNS and uh, on the adrenal medulla. NG type that is a ganglionic type are mainly present on the autonomic ganglia both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic ganglia. NM type are mainly present on the skeletal muscle. Now if you see the functional roles of these uh, receptors, NN type are mainly responsible for CNS excitation and release of the adrenaline from the adrenal medulla. So this is responsible for the increase in the blood pressure by the acetylcholine at the high dose because it's acting on the NN type of acetylcholine receptors. And similarly, the functional role of the ganglionic receptors is ganglionic stimulation, both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic ganglionic stimulation and ganglionic transmission. And NM type are mainly present on the skeletal muscle and they are responsible for the contraction of the skeletal muscle. Now let us see the drugs acting on the nicotinic receptors. So we have very few drug targets acting on the N, N type. So we have only two types of drug targets, NG and NM. Again on the NG, we have the two types of drugs, ganglionic stimulants and ganglionic blockers. So one of the, similarly the NM type are having neuromuscular blockers. So one of the drug acting on the, as a ganglionic stimulant is the nicotine as well as nicotine can also act as a ganglionic blocker. So nicotine at low dose produces stimulation, but at a repeated dose, it produces blocking of the ganglia. 
Similarly, another drug is a hexamethonium, which is a ganglionic blocker and nowadays used as an experimental tool. Similarly, trimethophan is previously used to control the blood pressure is again a ganglionic blocker. So ganglionic stimulants and ganglionic blockers are nowadays having very little therapeutic use. So one of the important category here is the neuromuscular blockers. So neuromuscular blockers include D-tubocuranin, pancuronium, vicuronium, rocuronium, atracurium, and mivacurium. All these are non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. And the drug is the saxamethonium, which is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So these are the various drug targets acting on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Now let us see the muscanic receptors. Muscanic receptors can be classified into M1 to M5 and they can be grouped into two groups M1, M3, M5 and M2 and M4. You can see that odd number of receptors and even number of receptors. These M1, M3, M5 receptors are coupled with the GQ type of uh, G protein coupled receptors and M2, M4 are coupled with the GI type of G protein coupled receptors. So these M1, M3, M4, M5 receptors are coupled with the inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol system and M2 and M4 receptors are coupled with the decrease in the cyclic AMP. And you remember whenever inositol triphosphate or diacylglycerol system is involved, they always produce excitation. So M1, M3, M5 receptors are excitatory in nature. If it is a neuron, neuron is excited. If it is a gland, gland is secreted. And if it is a muscle, it is contracted. Similarly, the decrease in the cyclic KMP causes uh, inhibition. Suppose if it is a cardiac muscle, inhibition. Or if it is a neuron, again, inhibition. Now you can easily remember that odd number of muscanic receptors are excitatory and even number of muscanic receptors are inhibitory in nature. So now let us go in detail about uh, M1, M2, M3 receptors. M1 receptors, the important locations. M1 receptors are called neural receptors. They are mainly present at the three locations. One of the important locations is the CNS where they are widely present. And they are also present in the gastric parietal cells where they are responsible for the gastric acid secretion. And they are also present on the salivary glands where they are responsible for the salivary secretion. Similarly, M2 receptors. M2 receptors are called as cardiac receptors. They are mainly present on the heart and they are inhibitory in nature, thereby they decrease the cardiac system. M3 receptors. M3 receptors are called as glandular or smooth muscle type and they are present on the glands as well as smooth muscle. The various glands expressed with the M3 receptors include salivary glands, lacrimal glands, sweat glands, bronchial glands, and gastric glands. Similarly, the various smooth muscles where the M3 receptors are expressed are bronchioles, eye, GI smooth muscle, bladder, genitalia, and finally, vascular endothelium. You can observe here, most of these are uh, smooth muscles, but here the uh, M3 receptors are present on the vascular endothelium, but they are not present on the vascular smooth muscle, right? So this produces a difference in this action, which we are going to see in the next session. M4 and M5 receptors. M4 and M5 receptors are mainly present within the CNS and their functional role is still not clear. So we are going to concentrate mainly on the M1, M2 and M3 receptors. So already we have seen the locations of these M1, M2 and M3 receptors. Now let us see the functional roles of, roles of these uh, muscanic receptors. M1 receptors are present within the CNS. So they respond for CNS excitation. So which increases the memory as well as the locomotor activity. So that's why the drugs which are increase the cholinergic transmission improve the symptoms in the Alzheimer's disease by increasing the memory in these patients. Similarly, M1 receptors are also responsible for the gastric acid secretion from the gastric parietal cells and they also respond for the salivary secretion from the salivary glands. So these are the three important functional roles of the M1 receptors. M2 receptors are present on the heart and they are inhibitory in nature, thereby they inhibit the cardiac system. They decrease the rate of contraction, they decrease the force of contraction, and they decrease the atrioventricular conduction of the heart. 
and M3 receptors are present on the smooth muscle and all smooth muscles are contracted because M3 receptors are excitatory in nature. But there is an exception at one of the muscle that is the vascular smooth muscle. Vascular smooth muscle is not contracted but instead it is relaxed. Or we have seen that uh, vascular smooth muscle is not expressed with the M3 receptors but the vascular endothelium is expressed with the M3 receptors. So the vascular smooth muscle is relaxed not by the acetylcholine but by the another mediator nitric oxide which is released from the endothelium. So all smooth muscles are contracted except the vascular smooth muscle. Similarly glands are secreted by the M3 receptors. Now let us see the tracks acting on the muscanic receptors. So M1, M2 and M3. We have the selective blockers for M1, M2, M3. M1 blocker is the pyrangipine, M2 blocker is the galamine, M3 blocker is the terifinacin. Here the galamine is not a complete blocker, it is a partial agonist which is also acting as a neuromuscular blocker. Similarly, other drugs like uh, atropine, scopolamine, ipratropium, thiotropium, cyclopentolate, and tropicamide, all these are non-selective antagonists acting on the muscanic receptors. So these are the few of the important drug targets acting on the muscanic receptors.